Of Susie Young Gates, one historian wrote, she was everywhere, had a hand in everything, a human dynamo. Born in 1856, Susa was Brigham Young's 41st child, a daughter of his 22nd wife. Exceptionally bright, she began college instruction at age 13 and promptly became editor of the student newspaper at the University of Deseret. By 16, she had married Dr. Alma Dunford, a dentist who soon revealed himself to be an alcoholic. When she divorced him five years later, she resigned herself to life as a spinster. My teeth, she wrote sadly, are the only redeeming feature of my face. Dedicating herself to pursuing an education, she entered Brigham Young Academy. Though only a student, Sousa organized a choir and founded what would eventually become the BYU Music Department. Even so, Carl Mazur counseled her to pursue a literary career. In time, she would write nine books, become founder of two magazines, and work as a columnist for the Deseret News. After just a year at the Academy, Sousa met Jacob Gates. Their marriage would result in 11 children, but despite family demands, Jacob encouraged Sousa to develop her other talents and interests as well. She attended summer school at Harvard. She founded the Relief Society magazine and became its first editor. Sousa organized the Utah chapters of the Daughters of the American Revolution and Daughters of the Utah Pioneers. She established Brigham Young Academy's Domestic Science Department and served for more than 40 years on the BYU Board of Regents. Her contribution to family history work was enormous. She wrote genealogy manuals, devised a systematic index for the church, and personally cataloged more than 16,000 names. She served as an administrator for the Genealogical Society of Utah, and in 1915, she introduced classwork in family history at the International Genealogy Conference in San Francisco. Working with Susan B. Anthony to promote women's suffrage, Sousa became one of the first women in America to vote. And while serving as delegate and speaker to five congresses of the International Council of Women, she was invited to tea with the Queen of England. Wherever her talents and opportunities led her, Sousa Young Gates was willing to go, with courage, to make an impact on the world around her. Near the end of her life, Sousa was asked about her preference for a memorial service. Her reply was brief. Certainly, I object to dollars and dollars worth of flowers, she said, unless there are some wildflowers my grandchildren could pick. I'm kind of a wildflower myself, you know. <laughs>